Welcome back, everyone. This is To Your Greatness with Dawn Mathis, and I am Dawn Mathis, the owner of Institu LifeWorks. And uh, if you've been following the podcast, you've noticed that we've been spending a, a bit of time and attention on uh, a previously underserved or under discussed um, topic and group of, of women, and that is women in midlife, women perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal. And so I'm just trying to get, get us all caught up socially, so to speak, because there, there is so much to this and it just seems like there's just not enough information out there or information that maybe gives this more of a positive slant, at least in some of my experience and in talking with some of my clients, um, even medically. So, um, so we have a great speaker here with us all the way from Australia. (laughs) And, um, I'm, I'm just, (laughs) I'm already loving this woman because she just, you know, she's got her peppermint tea and we're just going to chat. And so you're in this chat with us. And um, anyway, let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Her name is Angela Council. She is a naturopath or naturopath. I say naturopath, a kinesiologist and a mindset coach who specializes in helping women to navigate their menopause transition with ease. Yes, it can be done. And she is on a mission to spread that word that menopause does not have to be a tough time in life. In fact, it can be a time of stepping into your wisdom and falling in love with yourself and your life. And Angela believes menopause is a time to become the woman that we were all meant to be, destined to be, before the world told us who we should be. I love that. I love that. So, Angela, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks for having me. (laughs) All right. I hope you have a lot of peppermint tea there. I do. I've got actually, I have a whole pot of it. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh great. All right. Wish I was there. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to ask you um why why do you think that menopause is such a a taboo and mysterious topic even with women in mm-hmm. it? Um I think a lot of it actually let's take a step back and ask the question why are our menstrual cycles a taboo? I mean, from the time we're quite young, and particularly our generation, we didn't talk about periods. Mm -hmm. So if we were not talking about periods and it was shameful to talk about periods and it's okay to talk about pregnancy but only the good things that the baby comes out, we didn't really talk about birth, childbirth, is it any wonder we're not talking about menopause? Because as a generation of women... Mm we have basically been told or shown or taught that our bodies and what happens with our bodies is something shameful. Now, hopefully that is changing, Mm. but um, menopause, that conversation seems to be a slower conversation to be had. It is being spoken about a little bit more, but what concerns me is it's being spoken about primarily by the pharmaceutical companies who have a mm. drug to sell you. Um, but when we talk about um, moving through menopause on a natural way, that's still, I mean, if I ever make a mention about, you know, you can do this naturally on, you know, in Instagram, Facebook, I get slammed. I honestly and truly get slammed. Like people say, don't tell women that, that's not true. Well, and it's just like, we're, we can talk about it, but only if we talk about it medically. We can't talk about it if it's naturally. If you say it's natural, well, then you're dismissing what everybody else is going through. And I get that women struggle, but part of the reason why women struggle is because they don't understand what's happening. And when you can understand what's happening, and that's why I'm all about teaching women, giving them the knowledge, because when you've got the knowledge and you've got a better understanding, you know the steps that you can take 
to reduce your symptoms, to, to move through this time of life with ease and actually embrace it. But I think that the problem isn't just that we're not talking about menopause. I think the problem is that we haven't been talking about our cycles full stop for a very, very long time. Yeah. Well, it's up there with, with talking about getting older, you know, totally. it's, um, these are things that, you know, we, we, we fight kicking and screaming and you're right. It's the pharmaceutical companies and it's the companies that want to sell you a, a face cream to remove, uh, your wrinkles or, or, you know, I, I think I spoke, uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, uh, spoke about, um, someone I knew who, thought wrinkles, you know, she started getting wrinkles when she started menopause and, you know, she would use preparation H and it was like, ah, <laughs> I'm not putting that on my face. Yeah. You know where that's <laughs> anyway, supposed to go, so, don't you? <laughs> like, yeah. You're at the wrong end. <laughs> yeah. At the way wrong end. Yeah. I don't, I just said, how's that working for you? And she's like, well, you know, uh, but anyway, so, so with your background, um, menopause can 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 be taken care of naturally yes it can and look i'm going to be honest that when i i mean i've been a naturopath now for and it is naturopath here in australia um, uh, i've been a naturopath uh. for nearly 20 years so i've worked in women's hormones women's oh health i've helped women fall pregnant get their cycles back and all of that but when i came to this time of life i at the time i thought i knew it all and I knew nothing. Once I got here, I realized how little I knew. And when I look back at what I'd learned when I was studying, I realized that basically menopause was something that was shoved in for the like last hour at, at the end of our women's health kind of study. It was just an afterthought. Mm. And yeah. so I had to go through this. You know, I had I was experiencing hot flushes. My biggest symptom was that I had unbelievable body and joint pain. And at the time, I, I didn't even realise that that was a common symptom associated with menopause. So joint pain is, and it gets diagnosed wow. as osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or fibromyalgia. So it gets all these other diagnoses. And I also put on weight. So I put on a lot of weight. Um, despite really not changing my diet. So that was kind of, I'm going, well, there's got to be something here. And I was seeing, I was speaking to other women and some women were kind of having the same story I was, but then there, I, I was speaking to other women who'd actually been through it, and particularly some older women, and they go, oh, no, it was pretty easy for me. And you know, I didn't put on weight, I didn't get hot flushes. I'm not, my brain's going, well, what did they do differently? What did they do differently? Right. And I was trying to work yeah. it out. And I was going to say, well, is it the food that they ate? And was, that wasn't common. There wasn't a commonality across there. They, some of them were vegetarian. Some of them were meat eaters. It's like, no, that's not it. And there was all these different, I was just trying to find the answer. And I knew stress played a really big role. So it's like, okay, let's come back down to basics and work out what's stressing the body. Let's understand the hormones, which I did, and then what's the impact stress is having on the hormones? Because we've got to realize that hormones are supposed to drop when we come to this time of life. We have no eggs left. We're running out of eggs. We're, so we don't need the same amount of hormones as when we were reproductive and we were releasing an egg every month. There's no eggs left. So we just don't need that much hormone anymore. And it is natural for it to drop. But the body's the body's very smart. So because the hormones do more than just um, nurture eggs and are there for fertility and all of that, what the body does, it's got a backup system. So when the ovaries stop producing the hormones, the adrenal glands can produce the hormones. So and it produces it at a lower level, but it's enough for us to get the protection for our bones, our heart, all of that. But the problem is. Most women, when they come into this time of life, are so adrenally exhausted. They are so stressed because they have been raising children, running businesses, doing corporate jobs, doing everything for everyone. And so their adrenal glands are really kind of struggling just to try and keep them alive. And when the adrenal glands are un under so much pressure, it will not make the reproductive hormones that we require because it's making its stress hormones because that's what keeps us alive. Reproductive hormones just make us feel comfortable. So when we start to look at what is putting the stress on our adrenal glands and on our body and address that, you know, and yes, we've lived, you know, a chaotic life for the last couple of years around the world. 
And, and, you, and you would say, well, we, actually, we've probably always had chaotic life. It's just it's now in our face more than ever because of social media. And we can't change that, but there's a lot of things we can do to bring our stress down. We can be looking at the food that we're eating. Is what we're eating stressing our body? Is, you know, are you moving your body or are you not doing anything that stresses the body? Are you being exposed to a whole pile of environmental toxins and chemicals and, you know, makeup and all of that? That stresses the body. So all of these things are stressing the body. And if we can just lift that bit of the stress, you can't change the pandemic, you can't change the wars, you can't, you, that's out of your control. But what is in your control? And once you start to change that, then you start to realise that, you have some control and the hormones will start to balance themselves up. Now, you don't have to get rid of all stress. We need some stress in our lives. It gives us a bit of excitement. Uh, but but yeah. it's like <laughs> what, what can we do and we start there and when we can take the pressure off the adrenal glands, the adrenal glands will now make the hormones that are required and also on the other side of that, we're not relying so much on the hormones for the protection so if you're eating well, yes, estrogen protects your heart, but if you're eating well, your heart gets stronger anyway because you're eating the right foods for a healthy heart. Same with your bones. If you're moving your body, that will strengthen your bones so that you don't you know, get prone to you know, breaks and osteoporosis and things like that. Yes, the hormones help, but you're now in control because you're actually putting the right nutrients and the right things into your body to actually make it stronger. It's not so reliant on the hormones to do that job anymore. And then there's obviously mm. there's the mindset as well around that as well. And, you know, the mindset around what ageing means, what menopause means and all of that stuff. So, but, you know, that plays a really big role as well. Because if you think that menopause is going to be a really crap time of life, pretty sure it will be <laughs> because that's what your mindset right. is. Absolutely. <laughs> so mindset... Nutrition, I don't like the D word because when you yeah, say no. diet, people think no. yeah, diet, cutting yeah. things. So nutrition. Nutrition, yes. So mindset, nutrition and exercise. Movement and reducing toxicity. And then there's your emotions. So they're the five things I talk about. And when you do that, you know, and it could just be as simple as the first step could simply be drinking enough water every day because most people are dehydrated. Ah. Okay. Yes. And on that, I'm glad you mentioned drinking water every day. So, uh, you know, and it's all over the map, what an ample amount of water is, what should one shoot for as far as, as, uh, the amount of water? Look, that that is actually quite personal. So each we have, we all have different bodies and different makeup, but if we just go right. for, I'm okay. So I'm Australia. So we use, um, liters which I think might be a gallon for you guys. Two litres. Is that a gallon? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I, I could ask my phone. But, um, <laughs> so that, that much, really. So I, I was doing ounces. So um, I don't know. I, I was shooting for between 32 and 64 ounces. I think that's about uh, a day. I think that's, a, I think that's where that is. Yeah, I think it's round about there. So okay. eight, eight yeah. cups, eight glasses. And that's on average, and it doesn't have to be, um, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be straight water. It can be teas, but herbal teas, um, uh, black, like normal black tea and coffee are very dehydrating, so you do need to put more water in there. But it's like just making sure that you're drinking regularly during the daytime. And mm. you'll start to know if you'll know if you're not drinking enough if you get thirsty. If you're thirsty, you're dehydrated. You're actually way past it. Our skin will also tell us. Now, as we age, our skin does kind of lose a little bit of elasticity, but if it starts to dry out a bit, um, it just feels a little bit, we'll know that we're not drinking enough water. Um, so, yeah, but then that's just, that's not, I mean, that's just simple stuff, just doing simple. If you know that you're only drinking one glass of water a day, you're not drinking enough. So double it. Right. And then double it yeah. a week later so that you don't kind of put too much pressure on your bladder all at once. It's like when you – and and if you get to, as I said, yeah, I think 64 ounces I think is the same as two litres, um, you know, but just gradually increase it. 
and you'll start you'll actually start to notice massive differences you'll be actually able to think clearer it's amazing how much difference having water makes to your ability to think clearer our brain is 90 percent water so if we're not mm. hydrating our brain it's starting to dry out and it doesn't work as well well that's great that's great news i mean <laughs> That, that there's something we can do. Oh, you know, that, uh, that's the first step, yeah. honestly. That, and that's the first step. Yeah. Or it's, you know, getting up off your backside and, and going for a walk. So it doesn't have to, you know, actually I was just reading a post somewhere on Facebook just before we came on and someone says, you know, there's so many things I can do, I can do when it comes to menopause, um, but it all becomes very expensive. Drinking water and moving your body is not expensive. You can do that for free. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you don't have you don't right. need special equipment. Yeah, it's great if you can afford to go to the gym and you know things like that or have a trainer, but you don't need it. You can actually just put on a pair of shoes and go outside in nature for a walk. You can drink, take some water with you when you go for your walk. Uh, you know, and then you know we're already eating food, so we can make better choices with the food that we're mm. eating and go to more. Um, uh, getting lots more vegetables. The majority of people do not eat enough vegetables. So you don't have to be vegetarian, but we need to increase the vegetable intake. And look, ideally it will be fresh, but that's not always possible either. So we look at frozen vegetables, but we just need to get that in there. And when we start doing that and replace the, uh, the, the processed foods with real foods, we're now getting the nutrition because as you said, you know, diet, we, mm. our body doesn't need food to survive. It actually needs nutrition. So the food industry, the manufactured food industry has taken over food. And what we're getting, that's not food. That's, that's just fake food. It's not real. It's not what nature provided. So if we go back to what nature provided, because we're nature, we need nature. We, we can't live without nature. We, you know, people are living by eating processed foods but they're not living well. They're not healthy. Yeah. They, they might be filling right. their gut, but they're not healthy because they're not getting nutrition. And then what people do is go, okay, well, I'll take a supplement. And supplements are, you know, they, they work well, but I only, I rarely use supplements, but it's always a short-term thing to get through a problem whilst we use food to re to, to re nutritionalize that's not a real word to put nutrients back into the body <laughs> well you can make it a word <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's an aussie saying <laughs> there you go re-nutritionalize i like it um yeah one of the things uh, I, i've been working i've been working on my my nutrition um with, um, with a specific um, woman. And um, one of the things she gave me, because uh, all these other programs that I've tried were like, don't eat this, don't Mm -hmm. eat this, don't, 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 don't. And what she did is she gave me a list. She said, I want you to eat these things every day. Yep. And what a shift that was for me, like, oh, even and of course veg, vegetables was on the top. It's like a, a whole new food pyramid than yeah. than the one we grew up with, which was you know not not so great. Um, <laughs> yeah, they even have cacao on on this yes. new uh, food pyramid. The cacao is yeah, like cacao, chocolate, yeah. but not chocolate, as yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah I do the same. Chocolate. So I use a, um, I'm, I'm a personalized health coach, very similar type of thing. I'm, and basically it's, it's like, these are the right foods for your body. Eat this and you can have yep. this as many times as you like. These foods, maybe not so much because it causes this issue. These just avoid these. And yes, for me, and because it's different for every person. So every person gets their own personalized right. list and they know exactly yep. what's right. And it's based on their genetics. So genetically, our bodies are all designed in different ways. Some some bodies are genetically designed to be tall and thin. Others are designed to be bigger and, you know, taller and really sturdy. And those bodies are never going to change. So if you've got a bigger, bigger body, bigger bone, taller, you're never going to be this really slim person. doesn't matter how much you starve yourself. You're never going to get yep. there. So it's really much yep. about accepting who you are and understanding that there are different body shapes and that impacts and that's um, driven by your genetics. 
and that impacts the right foods for you. And that's where before when you said, well, what's the right amount of water? It depends because some it people depends. with a different body type, type requires more water than some other uh, other body types. But on average, two litres is, you know, that's a good good place to start. Yeah. And, and it, it's, right. it's, you know, all the foods, what's healthy food? Well, it, what's, what's healthy for one person is not necessarily the best for another person. So some mm-hmm. body types need more protein. And, you know, when they've got, you know, when they're shorter with a lot more muscle, they need more protein than someone who's bigger and bigger boned, you know, they need more plants and less, they don't need to grow anymore. So too much protein will actually put weight onto them. So they don't need that. So they need to focus more on a plant-based diet with a smaller amount of, you know, animal protein. And it's like when we can understand this, and that, and that's the core of what I do when I work with clients, it's like there's no diet. It's like this is a lifestyle and this is what's right for you and what's right for you. This is the right type of exercise for you. And, you know, you go for a run because it's the best thing for you to do. But you you lift weights because that's the best thing for your body. You've got a strong body. You know, you, you dance. You just need to move and be with friends. So when we know that, it becomes really easy. And then because what we've all of a sudden, we've dropped all the stress. Because now our body is being fueled the way it wants to be fueled. It's moving the way it wants to move. It's socializing the way it wants to. So we've removed all of that stress. We ca- can't remove what's going on in the world, but we've removed the stress within our body. And then mm. the symptom it's just amazing. The symptoms just go away. Hot flushes disappear. Joint pain disappears. Women are sleeping better. They're losing weight. It's like it all just disappears when you understand what the body requires and that's and I use this speci- I mean it can work for anybody it's not just for women in menopause but I use it for women who are going through menopause to teach them at this midlife what their body needs because it's really just getting them back to listening to their body because we haven't listened to our body for so long because we were told to be ashamed of it and this is such a big thing it's like I get women by the time they in there they get to their 50s and they don't understand their bodies because they've stopped mm-hmm. listening and I teach them to listen again. And I use tools to, to help them learn that. And then after a while, it becomes easy for them because they know how to listen. They eat something that doesn't work for them, they'll know because their body will tell them really, really quickly. I know that if I eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream, I might love it really good, but I know that my body's not real keen on it and I get pain shortly after. Now, sometimes I choose to have that and I know the consequences. So I work with that. Right. And that, but then that's a conscious choice, as rather than right. just mindlessly eating. So, you know, I don't eat it very often, um, but right. you know, when I do, I enjoy it, and I eat it without without guilt. And yes, cacao, dark chocolate is really high on my list. I can eat um, chocolate every day. That's right for my body. It's not right for everybody else's body. But it, I do have eighty percent dark chocolate, so it doesn't have the sugar in it. Yeah, so it's 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 nice to know that chocolate is part of the. The food pyramid. Yes, healthy eating. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yay. So long so as it's not me, that uh, crappy stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, just the good stuff. So, yeah, Angela, yes. it's, so um, what? Uh, tell us your website and then, um, and then if you wouldn't mind, um, if someone wanted to um, possibly um, – maybe a check into your method because your method is much more of a na- natural approach versus mm-hmm. medical, uh, pharmaceutical and that sort of thing. So first your website and then, and then maybe some steps someone can take, um, using yep. your website and, and, and h- how they would go about, uh, um, engaging, uh, you and helping them with their menopause journey. Yes. So my website is www.angelacouncil. So that's C-O-U-N-S-E-L dot com. So that's my website. Now, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about what I do, um, I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Same name, Angela Council. Um, I do have a, a free ebook called The Secret to Getting Rid of Your Meno Belly. Um, because that's almost the biggest problem that women complain about when it comes to menopause. And you can get that through my website. 
and my website, there's a pop up and there's, and once you're in that, once you've got that, um, you will then get links to a free workshop that I run, which is called The Secret to Thriving in Menopause. That runs every couple of months. Next one will be in May. Um, and also join the Facebook group, which is called Menopause Conversations. And you can join that Facebook group okay. now. And if you share your email address when you join us, request to join, I will send an ebook called Hormone, uh, a Hormone Balancing Recipe ebook. So Wonderful. that's kind of where I am, mainly on Instagram and Facebook. I am out on LinkedIn, but I don't spend a lot of time over there. Maybe I should because uh, there's a lot of women out there that also need my help. But um, I don't work one-on-one. -on -one. I only do group work. I run big group programs. Well, not big. There are about 30, um, 30 women in the program that run for 10 weeks. I'm in the middle of one at the moment. The next one won't start until May after the free workshop. So I do that a couple of times a year and yeah, guide women through this, teaching them how to eat for their body and understand what's going on with their hormones. Wonderful. So, uh, so no one-on-one, -on -one, um, you do groups of women up to 30. Yep. Yeah, I, only people I do one-on-ones are those who have already done my program because they already understand what I'm talking about as opposed right. to people gotcha. who, are, who don't get it. Um, it become I have to uh, spend a lot of time teaching them what I'm talking about. So my yeah. program is how you learn my, my process. And then once you're in my program, if you want one-on-ones, you can book one-on-ones with me and we can go deeper. But, yeah, I need to teach women first. Once I've taught them and they understand, then it becomes easier because otherwise one-on-ones, what they're looking for, generally what women go out looking for when they're looking for a solution is a pill to fix a solution um, because that's what we've been taught. I don't do that. I don't do pills, to, whether it's herbal or nutritional, I don't do pills to fix a solution. I look at the whole woman and rebalance the woman back from a diet or a nutrition and lifestyle point of view. So a holistic approach. I love it. That's yes, wonderful. Yes, because we are whole holistic people. and natural. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. That's who we are. <laughs> that that is who we are. So, um, what if what if uh, there's a woman who's possibly uh, no longer experiencing symptoms like the power surges or the brain fog, the mood swings, or th or let me put it this way, or thinks she has no symptoms. <laughs> can 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 women like that? <laughs> yes, I already know the answer, but it, this is for everybody. Uh, can can women like that still benefit benefit from your programs? Yes, because what I, because I don't treat menopause. I work with women to rebalance and reconnect back to their body. And if we want to live long and healthy lives, it's about us being in control of the food we're eating, the way we're moving our body. And when you can understand that and you can learn more, this just sets you up for, you know, the rest of your life. Our menopause gives us a window of opportunity because there's a big shift with our hormones, with our brain, everything changes. You know, like in this, there's this five-year window of opportunity. That's a great time to make changes. But if you're already through that, doesn't mean you can't make changes. You just, you, you just keep, it's about being committed to doing it. It might be a little bit more difficult, but many women, once they've gone through and they're postmenopausal, are still struggling with the weight. So that's still a big issue for many women. And I have women in my programs who are postmenopausal and they join because they want to lose weight. And now my program is not a weight loss program. It's a lifestyle program. It's teaching women, as I said, to reconnect to their body and what understanding what their body needs. But when I kind of speak about it and I do my marketing, I market to weight loss, but that's because that's because the, that's the problem that they have. They right. think their issue is weight, it's but it's not. It's not till they get into my program that they learn what's going on. But unfortunately, the way the world is, um, if people look at things that cause them discomfort more than things that you know give them joy. So I, I talk about weight, but I'm really really clear when I when I'm speaking on my free programs that I don't do weight loss. I do health gain. And when you gain your health, the weight will naturally drop off because now you're eating better for your body and, and you're moving your body. So weight will, will release when you're yeah. ready to release it. And yeah. I also do the emotional work as well to help women release because many of them are holding on to a lot of crap, a lot of baggage, and we yeah. need to release that. And as you release that, the weight will release itself as well. 
Yeah. Baggage in the emotional, spiritual mm. and physical sense, for sure. And, That's right. uh, yes. and you're right. I mean, when you, when you market, you have to market to, to people about what they think is, is the, the issue or the hot button for them. Yes. And weight loss is a hot button. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, is so, gosh, this is so great. Um, Angela is, is there, is there anything else, any other pearls of wisdom you would like to share with us in our few minutes remaining that maybe we didn't touch on yet? I think really the biggest thing I want women to know is that menopause, it's a transition, it's a journey, and it can take 12 to 13 or so years, but you're in menopause for the rest of your life. So this is actually the opportunity for you to learn more about yourself and create what it is you've wanted for the next half of your life. Because most of us have spent the first half of our lives being the person someone else wanted, being mm. the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect whatever. Well, yeah. We've been trying to do that and we fail at that because, number one, no, no one's perfect. But then loss of confidence is a really big thing that happens to women at this time of life. This is the opportunity to say, what is it that I want? How do I want to live the rest of my life? And a big part of what I do is giving women the ability to create a vision because we don't even think about a vision for our health. What is the vision for your health as you age? I'm sure no one has a vision that I am going to be sick and hospitalized for the last 30 years of my life. Right. So that change happens now. Yeah. You make that change just accept the fact you're going through menopause. That You, you can't stop that. So right. accept that. Once you accept that, then what can I do to make this journey an easier journey one and to give me the power, put the power back in my hands rather than give the power to someone else? Probably my biggest message. Yeah. And and self and self-image, would you say? Self-love? Um, I think we're very totally. critical as women about our bodies. Yes, we are. And self-love is a big one. And actually, uh, i just share a really quick story. I hike with a group of um, women and on Sunday, one of the, we kind of have a chat because we're all in different areas, different parts of Australia and we're on Zoom. And um, someone said, well, what's your mantra? What, what mantra do you live by? And a couple of people said, oh, my mantra is, is to treat others how I would like myself, how I'd like to be treated myself, how I'd treat myself. And then, but my mantra is... Treat yourself the way you treat others ah. because quite often yes. we are treating others so much better than we treat ourselves. We would never say the things to other people that we say to ourselves. We mm. would never stand in front of someone and say, you're fat, you're ugly, you're lazy and all of that, yet we would stand in front of the mirror and say that to ourselves. Absolutely. So treat yourself the same way as you treat others. You would be kind and gentle to others, I would hope. Be kind and gentle to yourself. This is a journey. It's time. It, it takes time. The body takes time to adapt. It's taken a long time to get to where you are. And it will take time to, to get to a place where you are really comfortable. But also just uh, ignore the, the images you see. A woman, woman's body, you know, being soft and round is exactly what some women's bodies are supposed to look like. Some other women's bodies will be tall and thin. You're never going to be there. So it's acceptance and all of this is about self-love. When it comes to the food you put in your mouth, is this the most loving thing that I could be eating right now? It's like, you know, and sometimes that piece of chocolate or that Ben and Jerry's is the most loving thing that you could be doing. But is this the most loving thing I could be putting in my mouth right now? It is all about self-love. Everything I teach is about self-love. Self-love, self-acceptance, accepting this is where you are, this is the stage of life you're at, this is what your body looks like. When you accept that, then it doesn't really matter what the numbers on a set of scales looks like. We need to get beyond that. Beyond the scale. I like it. I like it. And uh, <laughs> I, I think I think the first uh, – rule that you talked about how do unto others as you would have them do unto you or whatever that the golden rule uh, i love yours where you say treat yourself like you 
treat others. And, and maybe we should call that the diamond rule. Uh, just yes. for us women, you know, um, we love diamonds. We love chocolate. Yeah. Um, that's, <laughs> I love that. I love that self, the self love is a huge, huge component. And what you put into your mouth, it can be either something loving for your body or not so much. So I love that. Well, Angela, we've come to, come to the end of our time. I know you have you have clients, and we want to give you time to take a breath and prepare. Um, I just want to tell you how grateful I am that you joined us, and um, I would love to to reach out to you and look into some of these ebooks that you have, especially the belly one. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, but I, I, again, I just, I just want to tell you how, how valuable your information, your insights are. And I'm glad that people, uh, know how to find you, which is www.angelacouncel.com. And she has a couple of eBooks on there. One about, um, decreasing the minnow belly, minnow belly, I think you called it. And then what yep. was the other the book? Belly. I'm sorry, I was taking notes, but I couldn't write. Uh, uh, when you join the fa Menopause Conversations Facebook group, I will send a um, hormone reset recipe book. Hormone reset recipe book. Love it. Okay. Well, thank you again, Angela, for your time. Um, we We so thank appreciate you. you. We so appreciate you and you. yes, and it makes it seem, you know, this is doable. We can do this. We can do of this. We can. We're strong, wise women. We can all do this. Amen, sister. I, I totally believe that. <laughs> well, everyone, thanks for listening. Um, this was Angela Council. This is To Your Greatness with Dawn Mathis. I am Dawn Mathis, the owner of In Situ LifeWorks, and we appreciate you joining us. Take care of yourselves. Take even better care of yourselves now that you have more information and stay safe, love one another, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.